Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. This one, well first of all, before I say in this one, of course, gotta say, hope you guys had a happy holidays this past weekend. You know, it was Christmas, Boxing Day, I'm sure Hanukkah is around this time as well. Along with uh, other holidays that you guys may or may not celebrate, happy holidays to you. I hope that the New Year's coming up will be a good one for y'all. Uh, but now with this one, um, we're going to talk about Saquon Barkley a little bit. And I feel like we need to talk about Saquon Barkley and, and not not just his physical state, but his mental state in the sense of where is he with the Giants? Where is he with himself, with football in general, his career and whatnot? Because I'm sure you've all known, I haven't had a chance to make videos on it, but I'm sure other content creators have. And I'm, you know, it's been kind of over the internet you got internet access you follow the giants closely you'll see it when you're reading just news articles on them in general um but after the loss against philadelphia he as a captain opted not to go to the post game conference and answer questions from the reporters which is not a necessarily a bad look if you're not a captain if you're just you know a regular player on the team nobody's really gonna care that much if you're a star player on the team it's gonna go noticed and if you're a star player on the team plus you're a captain Meaning that you're supposed to be one of the leaders of these men and set an example for them to follow. You know, be basically a consummate professional and be what they, you know, that model franchise player. Because that's what Saquon Barkley is as a captain, as a star, and as the highest pick player of the current franchise. Um, When you do that, it goes noticed and it carries a lot of weight with good reason. And we all know Saquon hasn't necessarily been himself for a while now. Um, a lot of that has to do with injuries. In fact, all of it has to do with injuries. Some of it maybe has to do with, you know, maybe how he feels in his mental space as well. And, and what prompted me to do this video wasn't even the fact that he skipped those uh, press conferences. Because like I said, that happened earlier in the week. That was on Sunday. That was game day. I didn't have a chance to make a video on them. It would have been too late anyway. But what prompted me was a tweet from a New York Post reporter. I'm going to quickly go into that tweet. I'm going to pop it up on screen right now for you guys. Uh, Canizaro, uh, Mark Canizaro, I'm probably mispronouncing his name tremendously, but this is what the tweet says. It's very short from 1.32 p.m. today. It says, just got off his call with the giant Saquon Barkley and he tagged Saquon. He said, I don't think I've ever seen him sound so unhappy as he unanswered questions about his struggles and his future. He sounded like he's absolutely had it. Uh, well, Saquon, on the off chance that you're watching this video, we all as Giants fans has absolutely had it. And that's not even directed towards you. That's just directed to the Giants. We've had it for 10 years now. And as a player with Saquon, who's been here for four going on five, right? Yeah, four going on five years. He's been here for half of those struggles. As crazy as that sounds, but yeah, he's been here for half of those struggles. I'm sure he's had it. <laughs> he's been here since 2018. And nothing has essentially gone right for him, right? And I'm not I'm not defending Saquon's actions necessarily. I'm just trying to explain to you guys why the way he feels is he feels. You know, he came from Penn State, where he was one of the best, if not the best player in the entire country. Very hyped up, number two overall pick. At the time of the draft, we're talking 2018, right? Not right now. At the time of the draft, regarded as one of the best, if not the best player in the draft. Uh, you know, one of those players with no known weaknesses. At the time of the draft, no injury ever in his career. A guy that didn't necessarily need a great offensive line to succeed. Just a perfect package. A guy that was supposed to help take us to places. You know, he did his job his rookie year. He was doing his job his second year until high ankle sprain. Came back, lost a bit of a step, but looked to be building towards something towards the end of the year. Came back 2020. Oh, ACLs here, along with a few other knee injuries, I feel like that we forget. He had more than one knee injury that year on top of the ACL, which of course means prolonged recovery, prolonged healing. And so he came back 2021. Very clearly, let's all admit, I've admitted it several times, I was wrong, but let's all admit, this man did not look healthy at any point during the 2021 year. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. At any point during the 2021 year, he did not look healthy. Maybe during the Saints overtime game, but we're talking about that's about five minutes of football from Saquon in like 16 weeks. 
Boy, this man looks sort of healthy, and, and and he's still in recovery. Let's not forget that. ACLs could take up to two years. He's still in recovery, and on top of that, he had the low ankle sprain, which knocked him out for a couple of weeks. So you look at it from Saquon's perspective, right? Going from what he was in Penn State and the, su the success there to coming to the Giants, who are essentially one of the worst, if not the worst, franchises in the league, struggling to win, and then his body is just getting beaten and battered with serious injury after serious injury after serious injury three years in a row mentally of course that's gonna mess with him right you know going back to this tweet where he's like he sounds so unhappy and with his struggles and his future with his struggles i completely get it i don't blame him his future i completely get it i don't blame him i mean we're sitting here as fans talking about whether or not we want him on the team next year because of you know just how many injuries he has of course he knows we're talking about that of course he knows it's a topic of discussion he knows everybody all out there that criticizes him and criticizes the number two overall pick he knows about that of course it's gonna affect the way he thinks about his future and him sounding like he had it i get that as well because we've had it we've I, we as fans you know have had it for about 10 years now but as the player that's experiencing it yeah of course he's had it and, and i'm talking about yo whether or not he should be here next year it's kind of part of the point of this video right because I've been saying for a while now, as much as I hate it, because I'm a, such a big fan of Saquon, but I've been saying for a while now, maybe he needs a change of scenery. It's a phrase that's tossed around, not a lot, but a good amount in NFL circles. But in situations like this, I feel like it actually makes sense and it rings true. Where a player just needs to go elsewhere to get their mind right, to get their body right, and, and to come back fully. Especially with the mind part. And we got a couple quotes here from former Giants running back Tiki Barber, who is one of the best running backs to ever play in the NFL. I know we all, myself included, don't necessarily have a soft spot for Tiki because of how he left things with the Giants. But uh, to this day, I think he's probably the best running back that ever played for us. And, you know, once again, in NFL history in general, one of the very few to hit 2K yards, right? Like, so, hey, man. He is really good, and he has, you know, a couple things or a couple opinions on the Saquon Barkley um, situation, and I'm just going to read these quotes from you guys, and it is from, by the way, a New York Post article by Paul Schwartz. Tiki says, I don't think it's a crazy idea, especially if the plan is to hold on to him for as long as you can. He's not running confidently. He's in an odd space because he's trying to prove things to some of his critics out there, but he's not at 100%, and you can see it. If they were close to competing for something, maybe it would be worth it. But in a season that's clearly lost, I don't know if it is. And this is in regards to kind of shutting down Saquon for the rest of the season, which is only two more weeks. So, but you know, just resting him essentially for, for two more weeks, because what is there to play for? And once again, going back to Saquon's injuries, this man needs as much, you know, recovery as he can get. Right. And I don't think it's a too crazy idea either in terms of shutting him down and this is from judge in terms of shutting him down for the year deal that's more something that our medical team has not approached me about judge said at this moment there wouldn't be any medical reason at least not that they've brought to me about shutting him down i know saquon has been battling through a number of things this year he came off a traumatic injury last year it's a tough recovery he's dealt with a number of other things as well i'm not sure if that's in reference to his other injuries or maybe some other stuff going on in his personal life very much could be the case and then uh let's see here tiki said and this was a quote when i read i completely agree with because i feel like i've said this on stream i've said this when calling the games in regards to me saying saquon looks like he's lost a step like tiki puts into words what i've been trying to convey to you guys it's not the explosion i think that's still there in spurts it's the acceleration you don't see and i know a lot of you can agree with me on this he just doesn't look as fast as he used to he just doesn't get to his top speed like he used to he looks like he's running through water like he's stuck in the mud sometimes out there on the field that's what i mean when i say saquon looks like he lost a step because if he lost just his explosion that's fine mans could still be one of the best running backs in the league without his explosion purely because of how fast and agile he can be but we haven't seen that either and i and also i think it's about subconscious when he's about to go into contact you see him bracing for the hit as opposed to running through the contact 
It's almost like he's trying to protect himself and I get it because he really hasn't had a chance to heal from the ankle and I completely, completely agree with what Tiki is saying right there. The benefit is his body heals and he gets closer to the Saquon that won that rookie year as opposed to the player who feels like he's maybe 50% of that. It's hard though because he would never agree to it because it would be like abandoning your team when they're down and it might be best for him once again in regards to shutting him down. And maybe that's why... You know, maybe he's not necessarily done with the Giants, as some people might say, might assume. Maybe he's just angry with himself. That is something something he needs to sort out and figure out. As a competitor, like Saquon Barkley is somebody that models himself off of Kobe with that Mamba mentality. It's never an option for those guys to, to sit out the season, even if it means it's for their betterment of their health, because they feel like they're going to be failing their team. And, and that's where all of this connects, right? To the mental aspect of the game to how saquon is feeling it even connects once again to the change of scenery idea but whatever the case is i do actually want saquon some of you might disagree with me i do want him to be shut down for the season because of the health i've said this in many videos before the giants play too much with their players health don't continue to play with a guy like saquon barkley who's had three years of just straight injuries all right he and, and the time off will also probably give him himself to maybe, you know, go and figure out whatever's going on with his head, his subconscious and whatnot, like Tiki was talking about and get right with himself. Uh, it's something that's needed if he has any future here at all. And regardless of whether you guys want him or not, I think he is going to be here for next year. So at the very least, it will benefit that. But that's what I got for you all today. You put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.